Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO with the Toolbox Theory update in which we are playing as the Siberian Black Army. Now if you'd like to read about them, please go right ahead. And there we go. So really, I played as them once before, but with Toolbox Theory, this is my first campaign playing actually as a Russian Unifier. So I'm going to screw up here a little bit. I'm going to make a little mess of things here. If I remember correctly, which I probably don't, but... Um, we can go with the more socialist side versus the more despotist side, and I want to see what, what effects are here. But let's begin with the focus. Mother Anarchy's eldest son, the Siberian Black Army, formed in the fallout of the collapse of Yagoda's empire a few years ago, has become the torchbearer of anarchist ideology. Unbeknownst to the rest of the world across the frontier, we thrive in our lands. The free territory we have created was formed on the foundations of militarized anarchism, laid by the Black Army's first supporters, however. For us to spread the message of our ideology and liberate our neighbors, there's a long road ahead, one crowded with hurdles, but an opportunity for success as well. Our communes must be improved without stripping them of their rights in the state of society. The Black Army, the core unit responsible for their defense, must also be improved, lest we be defenseless when the free territory is in danger. If everything goes as planned, then we will soon be ready to face the future. And convene the General Assembly versus convene the Security Council. Let's get to more stability first. Even though the Siberian Black Army is the greatest advocate of true liberty for the Russian people, it would be a lie to claim that in the current situation we find ourselves in, organized protection by a fighting force is not needed. Thus, we have, our, we have adopted the system of militarized anarchism over people we have come to adore. Crucial to the system is a security council, composed of the leading commanders of every organized militia force loyal to the Black Army, of course. These commanders are all elected by soldiers themselves in this way we can be sure that they represent their voices and their interests. Another session of the security council will surely help us bring up and deal with all recent matters of security. Now, here's our budget. I'll begin with this one. Um, we have a deficit of 0.31 billion. Growth is not bad, and I just already paid off all the debt right now, but we have quite the deficit. We're spending as much as we can in the military, which is eh, maybe a bad idea. Uh, but if we lower it all the way down, uh, real GDP growth goes from 5.6% down to 3.6%. Total spending is 0.16. Not bad. Uh, honestly, the benefit from this, uh, I can't really justify it. Because right now, if we do this one, then the effects are on uh, our professionals. What are they? 0 0.09. Hmm. As they're worth it, if we go all the way down, then expenditures would be down to 0 0.05 monthly military professionalism. It saves a little bit of money, but it does hurt a real GDP growth, so we'll boost it all the way up. And we've maxed out social expenditures, um, admin expenditures, as well as science expenditures. If we have extremely high deficit, we'll see what happens. But regardless, uh, we'll do the best we can. And also, there's another thing we have here as well. We already started sketch for loot with the General Assembly here. So voters can show or can be held on a variety of issues through the Show Motions button. There are three types of issues that can be addressed. Reforms, resolutions, and motions. Reforms provide permanent changes to their effects of the national spirit of the free, Siberian Free Territory. They can only be voted on once the prerequisite reforms have been passed and they have been unlocked through national focus. Resolutions affect the policies upheld by the General Assembly and Security Council. They can only be voted on once they've been unlocked through a national focus or event. Motions are less impactful and provide similar smaller bonuses to the Free Territory after motions have been passed. It cannot be passed again for 180 days. Issues will be debate in the General Assembly for a period of two months. If two-thirds of the communal representatives vote in favor of the issue, it will be passed. Each commons has a set of ethos that will influence how they will vote on different issues. Commons can be swayed to support an issue through concessions. So we, should, we can show the motions here. So we can do reforms. We can't do this one yet, which would be very nice. We have resolutions over here. Um, actually, I just read this one. I don't even understand what I said. We have resolutions, reforms, which we need to mobilize eventually. We have resolutions, which is 180 days, and issues are 60 days. So uh, we get more political power. Get some pollution stuff. Our economy becomes slightly more centralized. And you can see the support of uh, uh, opposition and stuff like that. Non-discrimination. So, I would personally love the political power. But we can do a motion. We get one state will get infrastructure, which is pretty nice. So, we're, so right now, Konsk is strongly militarist, leans progressive, again, and strongly cooperative. We can get a power plant. We can expand the militias, which is pretty nice. We could use a manpower immediately. Um, we can expand research. Black Army training, military professionals begin to slowly improve, which sounds pretty nice. We do get some more despotism, though. And power of the General Assembly, which is nice for socialism and more political power, which we could probably use immediately. So I'm going to go with the power of the General Assembly first, uh, and just see what happens. So we'll see what happens here. We have one vote. Concessions. Support. Three. Not bad. In the meantime, because of the toolbox update, we also have the legacy of the Siberian plan as well. The Rexless Conquest. Uh, what does this say? The workers can dis dis discontent is non-existent. So the Siberian plan got completely reworked as well. You spend money, things happen, decrease consumer construction speed, increase resource efficient resource extraction gain. Uh, pretty normal like it used to be. 
Uh, it's definitely gotten nerfed compared to last time, with especially consumer goods. Uh, I like this one. You get more GDP growth. I'm not sure how damaging the workers' war will be, or the strike that we'll have once we unify Central Siberia, but we'll wait and see. And we also have an updated Warlord development. So, external investments, you get more straight GDP, increase liquid reserves by 30% of our GDP, uh, you lose political power, consumer goods production factor, invest in infrastructure, of course, industrial investments, which actually seems pretty strong. You get a whole production unit, so basically a whole factory. And you still increase pollution regulation, which is okay. You lose consumer goods production factor, but you get one production unit, which I think is pretty nice. I could be wrong, but if you let me know, what do you guys choose, if you do choose any of these, which one do you think is the strongest one? Because this is not too bad. You lose weekly stability, though. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's kind of not good. Let me know which one, if you use any of these um, in your campaigns, especially as a Russian warlord. But we must continue going on and then convene the council and hopefully begin raiding, because I want to raid. The most grand of experiments. Here we are, Peter uh, Sluda brought the vehicle to a halt. His hand hovered slightly by the keys, his body suddenly drained of motion and energy, or motivation energy. From the cracked and snow-covered windshield, Pietro could see the people trickle into the General Assembly building. A smile cropped, crept across his face and never ceased to amaze him. Hundreds of people, men and women alike, had attached themselves to the anarchist movement. The most grand experiment in human history. Pietro sat and watched and watched and watched. It was as if the car had turned a five-mile drive into a journey to an alternate reality. Boo! A hand pressed against the window and stirring Pietro from his motionless stare. Pietro looked to his left, greeting like a child, but a woman kept her hand against the window for stability, leaning to get a look inside the vehicle. Are you ready to go? Peter shrugged. Sure, he was ready to speak before the people. If he had won a seed for every speech he gave, he could feed all of Russia with one garden. There was something off, despite how routine it seemed. You're lost in thought again, the woman said, shifting her weight from one foot to another. If you were anyone else, I'd ask what was on your mind, but I know. I know. The woman averted her gaze from Pietro. The two sat in silence. The woman took a deep breath. Come on, Pietro, they need you in there. Let's not keep them waiting, then, Yevgenia. Convene the General Assembly. The General Assembly of the Siberian Black Army was one of the organs in, created in her first years of existence, aiming to coordinate policy between each and every anarchist coming to liberate. Being regularly convened, it often deals with everyday matters, yet matters that are still important to the flawless function of the free territories. As the time goes on, we continue to survive in this chaotic and unstable government and environment, and that has a lot to do with the fact that we maintain our ideals of anarchy, while letting our guard down. For this to continue, we must also pursue internal cooperation, um, and the General Assembly uh, provides us with an excellent way to do that, by discussing the affairs of our lands openly and, of course, transparently. Alright, let's see what else is up here. Ah, we can raid, my friends. Who are we going to raid? Krasnoyarsk? It's not too bad. Revolutionary Council seems... Uh, seems okay. Central Siberian? Uh, we can do this guys first. We'll see what these... It is over a river, which is pretty bad, but... We'll see. And we do have a Lutorino and motion to empower the General Assembly. So more socialism, because we are currently losing social support, but we have the legacy of the Siberian plan. We can only have the Siberian Free Territories, which is not bad. We get more debt ceiling, which is pretty nice, but... The old men that defend anarchy. We have military school, which is not bad, but not great, but pretty good overall. We have a Black Army Administration Moderate. It's okay. And then we also have the Flight East. Stamp, lick, seal. Envelope after envelope. Ivan Stepanov repeated the same mantra to keep pace. After the 20th envelope, he fell into the rhythm of the record player droning on in the background. Stamp to the eighth, eighth notes. Lick to the quarter. Seal to the half. Ivan appreciated patterns. They say pattern finding is what makes people human. It was nice to be human now and then in between being a glorified mailbox, taking in the information from different Black Army detachments and sending back responses. Ivan froze in place, his stamp hovering above the envelope. Something off was in his rhythm. It wasn't the record he had thoroughly inspected it before he had even paid the Breton, no. It came from outside the room, the clicking of boots on towel, stepping up groans, straightening out his jacket and set the stamp down. He could recognize the footsteps uh, from a kilometer away. Comrade Stepanov had time to go. There he was. No one really understood how Andrei Mishrenko ended up in a position of power or how he commanded such respect and power amongst the people, but Stepanov assumed it was because he represented the Russian people best. Vitriola, grizzled, old, he'd been everywhere along the Western Front, receiving distinction in his struggle against the Finns as the Union collapsed. So did he, breaking down in Kansk, his hometown. Are the others out there? Stepanov swarmed his, swept his arm across his desk, pushing the envelopes into a bin. Valentiv and the other members of the Security Council? The old man nodded, holding his hands behind him. Shep Chapyev will be late, but that means I'll show up as Suida does. The line brought a smirk to Stepanov. They didn't need the boy for military matters, but Valentin ha had insisted. Without the Security Council, the Free Territory would be chaos. Ah, yes. Yes, good. Old style of warfare. Ah. So, what does this stuff do? So, this is different, because I don't know any of this. this is my, like I said, this is my first campaign doing this, but... Improve slightly increased public education, you get a school. You actually get a school. Huh, that's actually kind of cool, you actually get a school. Industrial equipment? Industrial equipment um, is still probably the strongest. I don't remember uh, economic policies. Uh, actually, that's uh, kind of weird. Uh, 
Power tools. Let's see. GDP growth modifier goes down. Oh, you get even more growth modifier here. That's pretty good. I don't exactly remember which one's the best one for each one. You get more factory output. Construction speed goes up as well. Consumer goods factor plus 10%. That's pretty nice. That's probably still one of the best. Basic literacy. Um, growth modifier. Oh, that's not bad either. 2.5% more growth if you go from basic to primary schooling. We're on outdated research facilities, which is not bad. Actually, that's not bad. Outdated research? That's not bad at all. Agriculture methods. We are on basic mechanization, which is not bad either. Uh, that's not bad, but organized chaos efficiency. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, that's really bad. Oh, that's really, really bad. Holy crap. Um, let's see. Base taxable population, 80% with more admin efficiency. You actually get worse stability. You actually get more political power. Consume more. Um, it's actually better to be over here than down here, maybe. Two degrees. Somewhat. Not really, but somewhat. Somewhat. And dysfunctional high command. Compared to down here... Oh, yeah, that's not really good now, is it? No. You still lose... You, huh. So, really, equipment, it still looks like it's still the best one to do to begin with, so. Add some more to our debt, which is bad, but whatever. Oh, debt to GDP 10%. As long as we keep growing, right? As long as we keep growing. Do we win here yet, or do we lose? We have a single division here, as other divisions are still moving in. Fighting two divisions. They're still doing okay, though. Oh, look at those nice hills. Very nice hills. Kublitsky. And then the third Congress of Kansk, the town of Kansk lies in Siberia, on the linchpin connecting the Far East with the rest of the nation, has become the greatest example of the success of our anarchist experiment. In the building where you go, his puppets used to govern from, the tradition of the Congress of Kansk has developed there every few years. Representatives from across the lens of the Black Army convene. The issues to be discussed are plenty and are often important to the foundations of the free territory themselves. The delegates shall present the state the Black Army finds itself in, and the progress which has been made in establishing the lawless society in Central Siberia. With this, we can reflect on what we have achieved since the day of our foundation. The Convention of the General Assembly. And we lost some production units. Gosh darn it, that sucks. Uh, we definitely need some artillery, so. Pedro Suida rubbed his hands together for warmth. On his sides, burly giants, uh, covered in enough hair, body hair to say, to substitute it for a coat and, and had formed a protective barrier around him. As they approached the building, Yevgenia had been nudged out of his circle. How he wished she hadn't. Pedro had faced assassination attempts before, but the idea never really, really scared him. It almost enticed him, dying for a cause he believed in, but dying before he could accomplish his goals shook him to his core. Regardless of his opinion, the Black Army stood at his side, prepared to die on the dirt they stood on. He made a mental note to thank them. Even if their service was completely voluntary, as Peter, my dad, unrequested. The pack stopped before the doors. Casual, casual conversation was audible from inside. Peter smiled again. He caught himself smiling more and more often, unbothered if it harmed his reputation as a leader, as his friend Ivan Stepanov had warned. Its warm face contrasted with the cold hands that pushed dramatically against the doors, demanding silence throughout the room. Peter made his way down the aisle, shaking hands with the pack in people, laughing and reminiscing with recognizable leaders from communes on the other side of the territory, and solemnly nodding to the stories of the gray-haired, the widowed, and childless. Pitro. It finally made his way from one end of the hall to another. There sat a podium and seven chairs. The members of the Security Council had taken their seats and left the podium free to its most frequent occupant. Free people of Russia, Pitro shouted from his spot, his mere four words sending the assembled masses into cheers. I promised to Ivan that I would br be brief in my opening remarks, and we know it's wise to avoid irritating him. Pitro turned his head back to the chairs, flashing a thumbs up not to amuse, to, to, not to amuse Ivan Stepanov. So let me say this, even if this meeting is fruitless, know that every day that we live without the rising sun torture swastika flying over us, we have won! Liberation, one meeting at a time. Can we win here? Still cool. Honor XP still going up like that. Nice. So, present elected officer candidates. That's not bad. Present a revolutionary security reports. Present local development reports. I like this one probably the most. Uh, so we got that one done, hopefully. Um, oh, we didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. And so I want to do something over here if we can. Or even some of this stuff over here. Uh, Chris's military supervision. It's not bad. You do lose some daily political power. Uh, acad academics will begin to slowly improve. Slowly. Consumer goods production. When removed, we'll gain one. That seems really, really strong. We could use that immediately, actually. I'm not sure which is the strongest, though. But I'm sure you guys will let me know. What is this? Content is not existent. I see increases. Efficiency gain goes down, which is fine. Um, I see production, yeah, whatever. Construction speed is nice as well. GDP growth would be very good as well. I see capacity. I want to do this one first. Because more disc more uh, GDP growth is probably really strong. You could probably maybe gain that a whole bunch. And then we'll go with industrial investments next. It's very high cost. But I don't know what the next stage of, of Russia is when we unify. So this is my test campaign to see what happens here. So 
uh, present revolutionary security reports. The Army of the Free Territory provides the backbone of protecting our liberated lands. As it wasn't for them, we would be never broken the chains and would still be under the rule of the totalitarian Empire of Dagoda, or the democratic, supposedly, state of Central Siberia. However, ensuring that all units' functions and their actions are synchronized and harmonized with the rest is an incredibly difficult task for that reason. Security reports that outline the local situation across our territories and help coordinate efforts to relieve communes from dangers and defend them are needed. With the Third Congress of Council taking place, security reports can be important to show the big picture in Central Siberia and how it affects the anarchist communes, unity, and dealing with the threats we face is massively important in the chaos of the Russian warlordism. Ooh, increase our liquid reserves by 200% of our monthly income, totaling 0 0.008 billion. Oh, that's actually really awesome. You actually get money. Invest and pay debt. Our debt is... Yeah, well, it is what it is. Alright, I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty darn good. Now, I do want to do this one next. I mean, we hurt ourselves a little bit, but a whole another production unit, like... One more here. What do we made? No cities. And just focus on millies. Because I want to get more artillery. I want anti-tank. We need some support equipment and stuff like that. So we could try that. And then we'll work on this stuff more. Oh, it's supposed to war too. Oh, stability war support. Guns. Nice. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And do we get it? Motion passed. After months of debate, the motion has been passed by the General Assembly in a two-thirds majority. With a majority of the communes supports, supporting this motion, it will now be implement, implement, implemented across the Free Territory. Although some communes continue to oppose this motion, the vast majority of the Free Territory will see its implementation across the next few months. Following the conclusion of the debate, the halls of the General Assembly are now open to hold, hold a new one. Cool. So we can't do this one for quite a while. And we got quite a bit more social support, because even though we're still losing it quite a bit, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, honestly, I don't know if we're out. We're going to go the time recording. We could go socialist, or we go despotist. I don't remember the last time I actually played this uh, nation. So I'm going to play as the SBA twice, at least again. We'll go socialist once, and we'll go despotist another time. Um, just because, at least as, as long as those are the two options that we do have. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. We'll just see, I don't know. Uh, that's not bad. Um, uh, we need manpower. We could really use manpower. But I do want to get more political power. But let's improve military profession at least a little bit first. That's fine. They support it. Six. So it's strongly military, strongly co cooperative. Nice. We should be fine with that. So with all that extra political power, I did say I want to get some of this. A whole one factory, basically, is nice. Um, and let's go back up here. Let's see. Construction speed 3.5% is okay. Ooh, eh. Gain goes down. I prefer this one. Uh, that stuff is okay. Construction speed 3.5% is okay. I want to do... Let's do that one. I want to wait for streamlined focal production facilities. Let's wait for that one. The City of Oz. Nadia reached out to touch her breath as it hung in the air before her. She attempted to bottle the gas, captured it in for her fur mitts and mittens, and take it with her to no avail. Nadia was surely smart enough to know that one could not capture the air they breathed and stowed away for later, and if she wasn't, her grandfather who walked beside her certainly could have. There was just a certain magic to the city of Kansk, an indescribable feeling as long as she kept to the sidewalks of the city. Anything could happen. Look here, Alban. Just to one of the infinite identical gray shops. I don't know if it, she still lives there, but there was a woman. Alban trailed off on one of his stories again. Nadia rolled her eyes. It was all he spoke about the past. Every ruck seemed to remind him of a different person, who remind him of an experience which would remind him of a battle. Did he see what it was in front of him? They were in Kansk, Kansk, the city of the revolution, the first stepping stone in a global movement of liberation. How incredible. While well, the grandfather said, mercifully wrapping up his story, I don't know how, what ever happened to Svetlana. I can't remember if she was the one who went out to try and join the fascist party, or if she was the one who ran and won in Tom's. Either way, all I remember is that you had to spit in her soup just to give it some flavor. Nadia giggled. That's what all she needed to hear. She took her grandfather's arm and linked elbows with him. She looked a bit of guardian, a man of many bows, and wondered, did he do it all for this very moment? Or two people could walk down the street undisturbed, unwashed, and unexploited? Alban had to kill, had killed men before, so she could tell... By the way, his hand twitched towards his gun as people passed by. She looked to uh, look up to one, as she always did, and smiled. They were safe and free in Kansk, no less. All in the blood shed in Russia is worth this moment. Uh, present, present elected officer candidates. Another proud tradition of the Siberian Black Army, following the belief of the original Magnovshchina and all true anarchists, Magnovshchina uh, is a democratic election of all officers. Instead of blindly abiding by the traditional autocratic command structures, every commander of the army made by the people to protect the people is elected democratically. The soldiers' assemblies are the ones responsible for carrying out the process, and furthermore, any officer can be recalled at any moment. Over the years of our existence, we have succeeded in perfecting this process to the point where competent men rise to the top through the to 
uh, throughout the choice of the troops. As the Third Congress of Constance progresses, we must show the state of the military and those at its helm. Thus, those elected by the soldiers' uh, assemblies shall make their appearance in the Congress to be presented to the communal delegations and discuss other matters. Uh, Chris, did we just beat you up? We literally just beat the crap out of you. Oh, you actually have... Oh. Into an advantage. Oh, that's not good. Uh, hope you all win. Hope we don't lose too much. Taking control for ourselves. With the free territory entrusting increasing control power into the communes, the black army is taking a backseat to the leadership of the Siberian people. Much to the chagrin of prospecting, power-hungry generals and the people have decided to stay true to the ideals of anarchism that inspired the revolution in the first place. The power of the people grows. Wait, what? Oh, weak. Oh, because we have so much uh, support here, too. Hey, look at that. And he's defeated. Nice. All right, zone two. Nice. Good. 45 days left. Reunification of Russia, which is going to take some time, but that's okay. Assassination attempt. Oh, no. Say it isn't so. 0.36 billion. 6.375. Deficit is 0.34. 95% huh, of GDP. That's pretty high. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty darn high. Wow, that's really bad. Um... Extensive list of grievances. Deep within the halls of the General Assembly, tucked away in the often unused back rooms, a man had stomped in a, in, a, in a huff, marching straight past the people, patiently waiting for their turn to speak. Demolished. Everything gone from that hunt, and that was only the first day. The second day, some dude from up north brought a whole pack of dogs to my effing farmland. Have you seen the damage 30 wolves can do? How will I provide for my children? For the children of my neighbor? It is my duty to provide for the entire effing village. Pavel and his fat, so a wife couldn't grow crops if they walked into the soil themselves. We're going to... What are you... Are you listening... In all honesty, Arkady hadn't, hadn't been listening from the beginning. Had they even ex expected them to? Just like all the rest, he would nod. They would grumble about his swift death, and life would go on. His wife, M Mila, was not kind enough to accompany him at the least. She was a fool, though. She listened. She nodded along, but did so with strained eyes, focusing on each word said and jotting down notes simultaneously. Your situation is not just untenable, Mr. Kuznetsov. It's abhorrent. You're, you embody a beautiful spirit. One that wraps itself around this land and shields us from the threat of an utter annihilation. Bewildered but flattered. The talkative man found himself at a loss for words. Arkady chuckled softly to himself. Oh, Mila, your golden tongue is unrivaled. Mila hardly noticed the words of her husband, her attention focused solely on the papers before. With a swift tear, Mila handed the paper to the man. Bring this to Demyan. He will assure grain is relocated to your community. Thank you for bringing this issue to our attention. You have preserved the integrity of this free land. Thank you. I wasn't expecting any action on this, let alone this fast. Content, the man turned around and promptly left. Are you proud of that one, Milia? She nodded, still lost in her notes. I'd hope so. The line is extending into the hallway, along that head. Uh, the military's costing us so much. It it's just slashed it all the way down. Uh, it's still not bad growth. I mean, I want max out growth, but that's pretty high. We do that. All the way to zero. If you don't get very much actual effectiveness. Actually, what does this do? Stability, yeah, we want max out stability. Taxable population as well. Research funding, what do we got all the way down here too? Well, basically does nothing. Um, well, could be better, could be worse. 0 0.05.16. I don't know which what, what's the best thing. Should we just, just go in crazy? Should we just go nuts here for spending? Let me know. Should we go nuts with spending or not? Because... I don't want to have too much of a debt. I mean, we need we need a deficit so we can spend more to get actual real growth, but I don't want too high. Uh, maybe we'll keep it like that. We'll keep that low. Y you might as well come up to you, because you basically mean nothing. A fresh face in the free territory. An imperialist spy muttered Peter. It has to be. The ideologue of the Siberian Black Army had been pacing up and down his room, flicking through the pages of reports that had been trickling in from the border Kamlin units. An American, they claim, had penetrated the border with a Russian guide, most likely a reactionary collaborator, and had been visiting the communes. Peter studied the papers again, as I was skimming over the acrylic type. The stranger was spinning an outrageous story about being a tourist, while which was likely simply a thin cover for a CIA operative. Maybe interjected Stepanov, he's just a tourist. Honestly, Peter, I respect your spirit, but I doubt the CIA would send a college student who clearly hasn't seen a day of war or labor as a spy. Sidua's eyes narrowed at his military counterpart's words. Perhaps he's here to spread authoritarian propaganda about how wonderful his capitalist heckhole democracy is. Peter's reply seemed far less fire than his initial words, Stepanov's assessment cooling his uh, collar. The ideologue's face softened. No, comrade Ivan, you are probably right. Still, it could be beneficial to detain him and ascertain his true reasons for being here. He smiled slightly. Perhaps even arranged to have his little tourist given a tour of our way of life, ignite the fires of anarchism within him that he might carry back to America. 
Stepanov nodded. The idea had merit, of course, but it wasn't enough to either of them decide such was a way of life. Anarchy. Give him free reign. Give him free reign. Give him free reign. Yeah, because we want to scan really too. We uh, get more debt? Not a bad thing. And I want to beat the crap out of uh, Gus Noyarsk. Entry 10. Me and Zoya have been in the Siberian Free Territory for about a week now. Lots to write down. And states. And at least back in the states. I was always taught that anarchy was a bad word, like total chaos. The anarchy isn't what I expected. I'm having a hard time sorting it all out. Everyone lives in commons and are led by the councils, which are elected by the locals. I made the mistake of asking if that made the Free Territory a democracy. And some young guy in the black and red hat started yelling at me in Russian. Zoya translated for me, and this dude was going off on me about how democracy was just a failed authoritarian mechanism, whatever that means. To the credit. People seem generally content with the way things are, but their reactions to me have been pretty mixed. I've been stopped a couple of times by excited villagers who smile and take pictures with me, but just as many times I've been jeered at, spit on, I swear that I've seen uniformed men following me. I don't know what to make of this place. The people are definitely free, but the way they define freedom isn't something I'm used to. They share everything with each other. I have total gender and sexual equality, but I also live under a military junta. I came here not really knowing what anarchism was, but I don't think I'll understand it anymore now. They have the freedom to be free, but not much else. Uh, present local development results. To show the success of our experiment with a great number of communal delegates in the Congress of Kansk, the results of projects and the self-governance in all settlements must be shown. It is undisputable that to one degree or another, every village and town has received help not from a state authority but merely through the principles of anarchy that have allowed the locals to freely develop their homes. We need to highlight this by getting experts to, to present their findings and reports on the developing communities in the Congress. This way we shall also convince the more stubborn delegates of the effectiveness of our system. Nice. Very nice. Election day. Name? Uh, comrade Mikhail Stepanov, sir. Well, I, sh I suppose that you know that already. The voice of the frail, pasty young boy trailed off, his eyes darting from spot to spot as to avoid the those of his father. Ivan Stepanov steepled his hands on the bench before him. I'll take the liberty of assuming you're aware of why you're here today. The boy nodded quickly. Stepanov gestured off to Suida. For, uh, or Suida. For the sake of the comrade's desire to keep a good record of all meetings, I will allow the prospecting officer to recount his story. Mikhail's eyes widened in shock, his mouth slightly open, ready for the words to come pouring out, but finding the well dry. Mikhail took a few deep breaths and regurgitated the lines his father prepared for him. I oversaw the resupply of a commune at risk of famine. The situation was getting up pretty darn bad. The sentence was more of a question than anything else. He spent the whole time looking into his father for approval, and only receiving a cold, unloving face. Then the worst possible thing happened. Questions began to roll in, first from Siuda. What was the response from the community? Uh, great, they were really pleased. Small village, though none of them could make it. Then Meshurenko, and during this time, did you notice any uh, saboteurs from the Republic or the Soviets? Whoever was nearby. Right, well, not that I saw. Meshurenko frowned, and the boy adjusted the course, but but if they did, I would have, uh, they would have been shot on the spot. Finally, Stepan Valentiev, the most senior member of the Black Army, so Comrade Mikhail, you have said. What did you actually do? He opened his mouth to answer, but it was cut off by his father. That's plenty of questions from the council. Lots of prospecting officers today. I mo motion to vote. Comrade Mikhail Stepanov, you are hereby elected to officer. If only it was that easy. And riding, riding on. The Siberian Black Army, created amidst a sea of chaos and authoritarianism, must remain an island of stability and true liberty. Our neighboring worlds have become textbook examples of what we wish not to become, and so we strive to stay away from them, instead pursuing our anarchist dreams solely through the will and the determination of our people. We slowly begin to overcome the problems that have plagued us for so long, and develop central Siberia for the good of the cause. And since we are heading into conflict with other warlords, we must do everything we can to ensure that the Black Army will come out of it as the victor. Do I really want to attack in the mountains? Uh, we can't actually touch the tower, which is actually fine with me. Actually, we might be able to do okay there. Over here, forests? Uh, I'm not really sure. As soon as they have loot, we can't attack them, so... Central Siberia seems pretty tough. Civil Rights Act. Alright, how many divisions do these guys have? Standing the Cold War. We could five to seven. They do have they do have IFVs though. Tomsk has no IFVs. Oh boy. Motion passed. Yay! Great. Oh wait, what? Oh, you can't even they already used it. Show motions, please. Expand research. Leans progressive. Five hundred manpower would not be bad. Thermonuclear state. We do get an infrastructure. I kind of don't mind getting more political power, though. We could really use that. Let's go with that one. Supports. Cool. People's Revolutionary Council. Oh, 
I could try it. How much piercing do you have? I just don't know if that's going to be enough piercing for these guys. We do have one loot. People might want to raid us as well. Maybe? The Revolution's Book Balancer. Mikhail uh, Kilchichkov yawned. What was there more to do? What insightful commentary could it bring to the issue of the legacy of Makhno? Was it simply going to request Kilchichkov to determine how much it costs to hang out paintings of Makhno in color versus photographs? Ridiculous. Impatiently, Mikhail drummed his fingers on the thick binders of information gathered from his studies. Each company had their own binder, each village had their own folder, and each factory had its own page. Printed twice, of course, because the half-wits running the whole, all, this whole operation would likely ruin his magnum opus. What a matter the materials themselves were made of the finest diamonds out there. Somehow, some way, the Security Council would find some way to leave the pages ripped and stained. Comrade Kilchichikov? Comrade Siuda? A call from a few times, he assumed, judged by, by his tone of voice. He raised his eyebrows to show that he was listening, but made no attempt to apologize for ignoring Pitter. The assembly, as well, has been ready for your report about the economic forecast for the coming years. And Mikhail rose from his seat, his, his binders in hand, and began to walk down the aisle of officers and senior members of the Black Army as he paced up and down, distributing his findings. He spoke, I know most of you don't care for numbers like I do, so I'll do my best to condense these findings into layman's terms. Kilchichikov set the last of the binders down and presented a graph. Across the y-axis here, you can follow those green lines as it climbs. This, comrades, is a representation of the needs of the Black Army. And the communes, combined for simplicity, compared to the total output of the free territory. Mikhail traced his finger along the graph. You don't need an education to see. Things are looking quite well for us. Now on to my next point. I just don't want to go over here and fight these guys, man. Akuts has got the thing. Well, now we can't go to war with them anyway, because... Oh, no, that's fine, whatever. Tomsk has no loot. Krasnoyarsk, please. I just want your booty. Oh, growing Black Army control. As the free territory continues to expand and modernize, more and more administrative roles are fulfilled by the Black Army. With a push towards a centralized bureaucracy, the roles once left to communal leaders are to see themselves occupied by soldiers. Increasing arrest and repression of dissenting thought is further to solidify the power of the apparatus opposed to defend freedom. Oh. I guess I got more political power from that. There we go. Anything else here? Oh, look at this. Factory output. That's not bad. So that's IC. Resource. Capacity. Growth. Um, I don't want to lose any more stability, though. Slightly so increases police. Worker concessions. Discontent is three. I'm not sure how much that really matters, so we'll wait for that one. Honestly, I'll probably go back over here. Hmm. Hmm. It's okay. That's not bad. External investments. Thirty percent of GB. Point one zero nine. Four, oh, that's not good. How much do we have? 0.17. Oh, no, that seems kind of, kind of nice. External investments might be nice. And you get more state GDP. I like state GDP. Ooh, what is this? If a growth is not bad, it's not good. That's fine. Um, I'll do that one first. Why not? Uh, ooh. Agriculture. Ooh, which one was, which one was worth it? Because uh, I like that it's going up. That's actually very good that it's going up. How about expertise? Nascent industrial base. So we do this one. Ooh, look at that. Now, industrial expertise. The growth multiplier. I'm not sure how... It seems important, right? So, actually, expertise seems more important. And you get more consumer goods production factor. Expertise, in my opinion, has probably increased a little bit more. Basic literacy. Um, we want, actually, primary schooling. Because you get more research speed. Uh, monthly poverty rate decrease. Ooh, poverty rate decrease. Ooh, and consumer goods needed. Mm, that doesn't help as much, but ooh. And agriculture, basic mechanization, 10% more division training time. Army organization. You think it's better consumer goods factors, so ultimately everything we choose will help us out. Let's just go with. That's not bad, actually. So I think use the workplace of safety and unemployment. Ah, I'll go with workers for now. Break time in the Congress. Ivan Stepanov was a man of military experience. He served for most of the Union for the Siberian Republic and now served as one of the most, if not the most, influential figures when it came to the affairs of the Black Army. Not the most recognizable, nor could he claim to have spent the most time on the front lines of the mall, but he had seen his fair share of battles. Never in his service, however, had Stepanov worked as a medic, yet today he ministered two things his temple and flask.
Stepping up, Lena gets the wall outside the General Assembly, Ciuda, and mercifully called for a recess after four hours of a discussion about the official seal of the General Assembly, whether or not the wreath should be red or blue. Ivan took a swig, gulping down his dwindling supply of vodka, smuggled out from the west. He would relish in the few moments of peace he had left, however brief. Comrade Stepanov. I hope that's water in your flask there, Peter Ciuda. Peter uh, Ciuda shut the door. Do the Assembly Hall just behind him as he stepped out of the hallway. No want your judgment impaired. We're going to move on to some more highly critical discussion. Stepanov scoffed. I'll take your word for it. Comrade Stepanov, the change is, change is coming to Russia sooner than you think. We've been side by side for a decade now, and we've seen our highs and lows, but we've always been in here, in Kansk. And if we weren't in Kansk, we'd still be in Kansk. Am I getting through to you? Someone's got to give it some point. The revolution must progress. I would hardly consider myself a friend of liberty if I sat by while Russia squirmed under the boot of autocrats. Stepanov nodded along, not truly listening. He learned years ago how to tune out Pyotr, when he stopped speaking and began orating. Pyotr gave his friend a pat on the back. Come on, Ivan, no time to waste. The revolution does not take breaks. Revolutionary Reconstruction? The Siberian Soviet has survived what many would thought would be the end of a short-lived anarchist experiment. Tens of thousands of lives later, we've achieved independence from the tyrannical Yagoda, unfortunately. Our glorious revolution is not yet secure. Our army was utterly drained by the last war, and our industry is in no condition to produce guns at the rates needed to replenish our equipment stockpiles. Whatever industry is left, that is. We remain undeterred, however. Plans are already being drawn up for the liberation of Siberia, and our soldiers are eager to spread our revolutionary anarchists into all of Russia. No gods nor masters, only men. Ah, yes, I'm glad we waited. Yes, go in immediately. Beat the crap out of them. The gray area. The red mantle. The black army. Review the chain of command. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Many heads are better than one. Political power. Ooh. Re com reform commenced. Land reform become available. I want to get GDP growth as fast as possible, right? Miscellaneous costs. Ooh. That's not bad either. There's a lot of good stuff here. Black Guards unit? Nice. Uh, I don't want to choose now socialism versus despotism. Ooh, that's not bad either. But slowly begin to improve. It's not as good, not as, good as just improving. I want to kind of go this way. The Red Mantle next. The Siberian plan was a massive industrial program that built up regions of Russia far from the front line with Germany industrially in preparation for the German Soviet war. Well, of course, we ultimately lost the war, but the industry we built during that time allowed the Soviet Union to push far beyond what anyone ever expected. Ironically, the territory of the Siberian Soviet was never our particular focus of the plan. And thus, our industrial capacity is lower than that of our neighbors. Uh, nonetheless, the industry available to us will provide a solid base upon which we can, of course, expand. Yes, refuse. Frenzy survived, huh? Democracy saved. Ah, oh, beat the crap out of them if you can. Get oh look at that army XP. That's not bad. That's not bad. Did we win, my friends? Oh, I hope we did. But happy July first. <sighs> Seize all we can use. Yes. Economically, take money. Auto payment is probably pretty good. All right, so we have point two three billion. Our debt is yeah point two three. GDP, oh boy, oh boy. Well, we can't invest it, which kind of sucks. I could go higher, but... So, 0.23 billion. Now, we paid it off, so it doesn't help us that much. At least our debt interest is not that high. It's very low, which is good. Spoils of war, nice. Look at the inflation. Wow, wow. Yeah, get more growth if you can. 0.36 billion is not very good, but whatever. Ah, people falling apart. And our mantle. People survey, more political power, why not? In order to properly allocate resources in the communal economy, it's important that we know what territories are suitable for industrial development, for resource extraction, and for agrarian development. Additionally, borders between warlords are often uncertain and flexible. A land survey would allow us to plot out exactly what territory is ours and what territory would be valuable or strategic to defend in the event of war. To this end, local communities will be asked to participate in a people survey, in which the communes will voluntarily survey their lands in coordination with their neighboring communes. Nice. Two days left, let's see what we do. Hopefully we get it. Motion passed. Great. Oh, mobilize your territory. Oppose is passive and isolationist. Slowly cooperative. Uh, we want to get that one. I don't mind losing stability. We get better consumer goods, division, organization, political power. They support. Nice. There goes Yugoslavia. Alright, not bad. Infrastructure, trainer troops. Eh. Slowly improve is okay. 77% mm, war planning is. Mm, yeah, don't want to lose any more stability. 0.11. 0.11. 
You lose political power. Consumer goods production factor. External investments doesn't seem too bad. But I want to keep doing this stuff as well. More growth. Yeah, and then I want to do external investments. I want to see what it's like. Tax temp cut. Civilian austerity. Uh, I don't want to lose any political power. We can't afford that. Military austerity. You know, we could probably afford that, even though it does like nothing for us right now. The haunting of the Kansk Elementary School. The scratch of the chalk against the board produced a ghastly sound. Uh, Mr. Abramov scratched out a circular shape, drew a thin line along the bottom, put a triangle just above the line, and closed out his art articulations by planting two dots on the left and right of the triangle. The elderly man turned into the class of young boys and girls. What do you think? Did I give Ilya Repin a run for his money? Silence from the class. Oh, you may be a little too young for that one. The old man chuckled. Oh, okay, how about now? About the Frankenstein of shapes, Mr. Abramov wrote something resembling the word Nikolai, his ar arthritis sabotaging his effort, making the word look more like chicken scratch. The pieces finally came together as beneath the circle he wrote Bukharin. Oh, I know that guy. My mom was a painting of him. He was that man who fought the Germans and gave us big factories we have today. One eager child sprung up from her seat, proudly displaying his knowledge. That's not true, Igor. My dad was there, you know. He lived in Moscow. He saw Bukhara and secret police firsthand. How would they just take you right off the street? If you were being bad, my dad calls him a tyrant. Your dad sounds like an idiot. The schoolboy retorted. My mom would have had him clean the bathrooms if she heard him talk like that at their house. The classroom exploded into argument, with factions of children informing about the legacy of a man long dead. As much as he was pleasantly surprised to see some debate, it was getting a little bit out of hand. All right, everyone, let's quiet down now. We're not going to make any progress calling each other names, will we? What do you think, Mr. Abramov? Was Bukharin a bad guy, or was he a good guy like my mom says? The old man scratched his whiskers, quieting the students as he contemplated his answer. But after what seemed like centuries to the children, the old man reached his conclusion, and all he did was shrug. The people survey. In order to properly allocate resources in the communal economy, it's important that we know what territories are suitable for industrial development, for resource extraction, and for agrarian development. Additionally, borders between various warlords are often uncertain and flexible. A land survey will allow us to plot exactly what territory is ours and what territory would be valuable or strategic to defend in the event of war. To this end, local communities will be asked to participate in a people survey, in which the communes will voluntarily survey their lands in coordination with the neighboring communes. We always got more stuff here, but. Anything up there? No, not yet. After that one, industrial data consolidation. As a result of our rather unique decentralized form of government, the quality and amount of industrial machines available to each commune is often di dictated by what the communes themselves can produce. This has led to great disparity in industrial strength between the communes, and some communities have been unable to produce according to their needs. Having compiled the industrial data provided to us by our various communes, we have identified several communities that will benefit the most from an investment into their productive capabilities. The people's apocalypse, of course. A nation of writers, poets, and scholars, the University of Tomsk produced more manuscripts and manifestos than most people care to count. Yet One Piece, published anonymously, has begun to spread controversy far and wide throughout Siberia. The People's Apocalypse tells the story of a face of scholar's journey throughout the fall of the Central Siberian Republic, a progressively encountering those who the author identifies as the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Ivan Zavoloko, Genrik Yagoda, Alexander Pokrishkin, and Nikolai Andreev. Awaking in Orochu after falling ill, the scholar finds the people reduced to babbling madmen, clawing out their own eyes and pulling apart their scalps from a pestilence brought to the land from Zaboloko, poisoning his people with an elixir named Faith and weakening the body of the Republic. Chased away by the blind and corrupted, the scholar soon finds himself witness to the lands being set ablaze and the free thinkers abducted and persecuted by Yagoda as the blue faced demons that wage war against the people. Fleeing the slaughter, they come upon endless roads buried under living skeletons, famine consuming the land from Pokrushkin's terrible betrayal, before finally witnessing Andreev's betrayal across Noyarsk, piercing the heart of a nameless soldier embodying the noble republic. Condemning the four men as bringing about the end of the promised people's realm, the story ends with the land destroyed and all four being consumed by madness under the weight of their own evil, turning to stone. As hideous reminders of their deeds, though it is left unanswered whether anyone will survive the end, this end of days to remember what has been lost. A haunting tale. But a tale nonetheless. As we can get more uh, loot. Yay! The people survey. Lost and alone. I do want to try this one out though. Oh, this one's pretty good too. How many how many things do we have here? We have one. What kind of sucks? Not gonna lie, that kind of sucks. He walked through the lands under the, uh, under the control of the Siberian Black Army. He had entered the free territory the previous day, continuing deeper into Siberia. He had passed through many villages in the territory, helping where he could he could in exchange for food and supplies. Though in more remote villages, he was often run out of town as a grifter. Night fell, and he set up his camp in a small uh, copse of trees. 
As his fire cracked in the night, he looked up into the sky. It was awash with stars and more than he had ever seen in his exile soon. The sound of the fire lulled him to sleep. The memories came then, twisted by his mind, and laid bare before him. He saw flashes of life under the glorious reign of the Nazi party. The camaraderie and nationalistic fervor that became a fact of life for the citizens' rights. He saw his mother, proud and beautiful, laid low by an illness that poisoned her blood. He remembered the doctor's face, sneering about her impure ancestry. It was the last he saw of her before his conscription. Sir, the fatherland and its army or die like the mutt you are, boy, the word of the Gestapo agent echoed in his mind. His father, a proud soldier of the Reich, was arrested for polluting the Aryan gene pool and his wife's Jewish ancestry. He got the news of his execution on the front of the West Russian War, finally came to his victims. The brutality of fighting in West Russia would stay with him for the rest of his life, he knew that, but it was the reprisal operations that truly haunted him. Villages depopulated by his unit. The men rounded up and shot, begging that their families be spared. The women and children were locked in their homes and churches and burned. He could hear the screaming still, judging and condemning him. Without a shout, his eyes shot open as he looked around in panic. After he caught himself, he picked up his things and resumed his journey. It will never be enough. Oh, that real GDP growth is not good. That's a little better now. GDP is point, uh, point something. Point something, something, something. Cool. Begin the redistribution. The land reform efforts we began years ago when we first established the Siberian Soviet were never completed. The focus of simply surviving the Siberian War consumed most of our time and efforts. With these issues resolved, though, we can resume our efforts redistributing the land according to each community's needs. Our failure to resolve the issues led to some communes abusing their size and manpower to push the other communes out of land that they need. This land reform program will seek to reorganize communal borders in a more fair and equitable way. Nice. And get that GDP growth as fast as possible. Oh, what's over here? Oh, a raid against those guys. Workers discontent is low. That's eh, all right. Happens. Can we actually win against these guys? We could try it. Screw it. We'll try it. We could actually use some more manpower. Tom's. Tomsky. Tomsky. Oh, we're demobilizing. Oh, that's not good. Hey, well, that's not too bad. Poverty rate changes. Where to allocate? Most people would learn to respect Mishrenko and Valentiv, love Siuda and Taratua, and to be obedient to Stepan of years ago. What he saw before him were fools, even Ivan, who seemed the smartest of the bunch, didn't know the first thing about what really mattered once rhetoric and bullets had been stripped away. Money. I could offer you a lot of BS right now. Uh, Kill Chichikov said blankly, looking right into the eyes of the members of the Security Council. Believe me, my wife has written and rewritten speeches a hundred times over to try to communicate this fact to you, but I really do not see the point in that. Stepanov raised an eyebrow. Ivan knew that he had red faces that much. Kill Chichikov knew. Ivan Stepanov was an actor, not by trade, but by lifestyle. Kill Chichikov had his suspicions about that fat general, but never had the concrete proof to present to the General Assembly. Okay, then. What's your announcement, J Comrade Kill Chichikov? He rested his elbow on the bench of Taratuta. He figured she'd be at least be like least likely to swat him away. Actually, I've changed my mind with the permission of the council. I will sprinkle in a little BS with quizzical looks on her faces. The members of the Security Council do not make a sound of silent consent. Great. I won't bore you with my entire life story. I dread speaking longer than I must. The reason I started working with numbers so many years ago is because they're all static. They don't change. People do. That's why I never could never follow my father's footsteps as a preacher. I don't like too much change. A little is essential. What we have here is essential. But I can't tra tra track change. I'm not following, Siuda said. What does this have to do with the budget? The numbers changed. My initial projections were not accurate. I effed up this time. What we have now is a at a crossroads. I have prepared two new economic models, one which prioritizes retooling our existing factories and another, which plans out the construction of new ones. The choice is yours. I'm just a numbers guy. What we'll do with what we have? Maximum production efficiency. Capacity. Output. Maximum production efficiency. We must make do with what we have. Print. Oh. It's not bad. Uh, dedicated agricultural production? That's not bad either. I want to get that one as fast as possible. Dedicated agricultural production. Our commons are growing larger by the day. The nutritional and economic security that our commons provide for the everyday family has had a pronounced effect on birth rates. With this in mind, it's become ever more pertinent that we boost our agricultural output. Consequently, mechanized farming equipment should be produced and distributed to the communes so that they might increase production. Not only will this help our farmers produce more, but it will also free time for our workers to do other tasks. Nice. Get the schools going too. I would do another investment if possible. Oh, they they pay a tribute. Okay. Hmm. I like that a lot. 
I like that the economy actually has an effect here. Give us what it is. It's basically nothing here. We have 0.16. That's very little, very, very, very little. I love how that debt to GDP just dropped. The GDP was, was a stagnant. So it's up, relatively stagnant. It goes straight up. Motion passed. Great. Great, 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 great. All right. So which means time for a new motion, right? Show motions. Uh, we Let's get more socialism for now. Just we could use more political power. We could use more sway to the social side. Because we're kind of balanced. I'm not sure which way we're going to go. Which you guys are probably going to inform me in your comments. Which way we should go. At least for this campaign. Because we'll come back to this one actually someday. So. Not bad. Streamline focal production facilities. Huh. It's not bad. Oh, that's 1%. That's not too bad either. Yeah. Return to the mines. Resource extraction. Ooh, increases factory IC by 3.5. Ooh, somebody did. Oh, return to the mines. Well, well, let's wait. I'm going to repair this one first so we get some more GDP. Among the few successes of the old Tsarist regime was the creation of the Trans-Siberian Railroad. The railroad had an inordinate impact on Russia, binding the nation in a way never seen before. Used extensively during the Bukharan regime after World War II, it became a vital artery for the Soviet Union in the post- or the Soviet-German War of the 50s. After we lost the war, German bombers pummeled the rail line into near oblivion. However, the German bomber is now far away from Russian skies. We can repair the portion of the railway that runs within our borders. Maybe, and maybe bring back some of its former luster. People's Revolutionary Army. Oh, boy. Nice. Has Burgundy finally done it? He, they've gone kaboom. So that's all the way over there. Uh, let's get some better gun stuff. It's not much. But it's honest gun stuff. They're not looking extremely strong either. Two to four, that's pretty nice to see. That's pretty strong too, but we'll see. Helicopters are still strong, but they got nerfed a little bit. Anything here? 0 0.04, 0 0.23, that's so much. 50% of the, oh wow, that's pretty bad. No, we're good. Gunfighters in the fields, please, you need to listen to me. You need to leave me alone, lady. Killed Chichikov, inserted the key into the slide and turned it. Vienna was a dark-haired woman, a single freckle on her nose. Killed Chichikov, remembered her physical attributes as well. There wasn't much else to observe on the woman. She wore rags for warmth and walked barefoot when there wasn't snow, which was there never was. My son is still out there. You can find him. Comrade Siuda told me you could find him. He believes he's out there. Why don't you? The woman pleaded with him as Killed Chichikov began to walk down the street. Killed Chichikov took a cigarette from his pocket and, of course, lit it. I am just the middleman, lady. I don't remember every single name that comes across my desk. She'd been hounding him for months. Apparently, Killed Chichikov had put out a request for additional volunteers to a commune racing raids from up north, and her son was the first to go. He shook his head as he walked. These people made him miss the days in the Union where she oversaw the Siberian plan in peace. The woman hastened her pace and stopped in front of him. She gripped onto Killed Chichikov's shoulders and he moved to shrug her off, but stopped. He was face to face with her. He could see the tears from it form in her eyes as he watched as they rolled down her cheeks and disappeared under the ground below. Kill Chichikov's crouched up his face in frustration. Gosh darn it. <sighs> Move it. But he didn't. He was frozen. Please, she pleaded. If you can't find him, don't make anyone else go through this. You can find some alternative. I know you can. My son believes so much in this movement, and you and I. He may have laid down his life for this. He didn't have to die for some dude from Tomsk. Kill Chichikov, or Kill Chichikov, went through a range of emotions, from anger to empathy. He wished this woman was number. He wished this woman was number, so we could understand her. We need to move back in the Black Army. I'll put on more calls for factory workers instead. Happy? Um. Hmm. We get. We need that manpower now. We need, put on more calls for factory workers. Uh, production efficiency gain. That's okay. We're going with numbers. We need the numbers. We literally need the numbers right now, because they're all gone. Oh, are they not? Now they're attacking with somebody. Looking pretty good so far. The Jerusalem Conference. Step towards peace? Hey! Who you get, you so rock sucker? Is this worth doing? It might not be. Hmm. This one's probably worth doing, though. Hmm. The whole production unit. So we have only one factory going right now. It's. Oh, what do we have for our reserves? Anything here? Not even guns? Ah, let's go we'll go on this one first. Okay, not too bad. I wish we could raid some more, though. So, let's take a look. So, the horse is not very good, which is good to see. 
the infantry division is okay. We actually might be able to do relatively okay against these guys too, so. Peace conference is over, probably Guiana. Yep, continue to regional interconnection probably next. Further, the development of our infrastructure is always a good old to strive towards. Not only does it improve the flow of resources throughout the country, but it also brings the communes closer together, both economically and politically. These bonds between them will be tested as we expand the reach of the Siberian Soviets, so anything that we can do to strengthen them will be vital. To that end, we will be investing in the creation of a road system that will travel all across Siberian Soviet, and connect us with even the most isolated communes, of course. Bombed out rails, Yevgenia Taratuta was an author. When she was not writing, however, she found joy in taking in the majestic Russian countryside. She didn't remember much from the Ukraine. It was flat, she remembered, not like the hills of Siberia. It reminded her a bit of the time she spent in France, her father, the Ukrainian anarchist, that fled the killings there. Nature gave her inspiration, it gave her purpose, but it became increasingly difficult to view the far reaches of Russia with the rail system being in such disrepair. I want to fix the rail, Starstuta said. I want to fix many things. I want to heal this fragmented country. I want to bring freedom to every oppressed person. But I fear we will be forced to march on foot to every village in Russia to liberate them unless we have functioning rails, Starstuta paused. Failing or falling into a typical oration flow before getting to her main point. We must make it a paramount duty of the General Assembly to repair the trans siberian Railroad to its former glory. Good idea. Terrible justification, though. Androni Mishrenko spat. You were in a Sevastopol. The Germans had arbitrarily the size of the mountains carried on rails. I would support this motion if mimicking the superior weaponry was the main goal. Sip enough for all designs. The proposal is fine, Yevgenia. I think restoring the rail would have many added benefits, such as potential profitability. Rope to hang themselves in all right. Behind him, killed Chichikov, not in agreement. Dollar signs practically illuminating his eyeballs. Bitter swayed his head from side to side in contemplation. I don't know, Comrade Tartuta. Don't you agree that there exists a triple past in association with the Trans-Siberian? Would it not be better to uproot the section of rail that exists within our boundaries and start fresh? Additionally, this will prevent status elements from abusing the rail system for their own use here. Tartuta offered a small smile to Pieter. She admired his idealism. It was what made him a perfect figurehead for the anarchist movement. I see your approach, Comrade Siuta. Ciu I'll leave the decision up to this body. It's here to stay. A new revolution means new rail system. I want that political power, but getting infrastructure now seems really nice. Here's our construction speed. What are we at right now for con uh, infrastructure, though? 3, 4, 2. Oh, that's not very good. Honestly, lowering that by 1.5 is absolutely worth it. And return to the mines. With normal economic functions restored, and a good deal of stimulus having been added in the form of public reconstruction projects, the economy has begun to grow at a rapid pace. Demand for mineral resources has increased nearly tenfold, and many of the economies are ill-equipped to provide. With the threat of German bombers destroying any large-scale mining operations gone, this seems like a good time to reopen mines that were previously closed. Additionally, we should begin manufacturing and distributing new mining equipment to the communes with mine sites ready to go. Hey, look at that. Nice. Motion passed. Commence land reform? Even more political power, more debt ceiling. Slightly more centralized. Um. Sure. Scam for that looty booty. Mm. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about this, this stuff down here. What should I invest in, what I should not. But with the Siberian plan, let me go this one. It's fine. Oh, 0.294. Wow. 6.457 is not bad. But tax cut would probably would not be a good idea. Rural production notes, the foundation later, we don't get there as fast as possible, so. Oh look at that look at that lag. Yeah, that debt is not good. Taking control for ourselves, so look at that. Nice. We lost political power, great. But let's end with rural production nodes. The heart of anarchist society lies not in the cities and suburbs, but in the countryside,s rural towns, and local communities therein. Helping these communities to end their reliance on cities for manufactured goods is an important goal for us. Therefore, we'll encourage the development of local workshops so that the communes might produce manufactured goods for themselves. Additionally, these workshops will allow the communes to arm themselves more easily, with the production of Kalashnikovs being right in their own backyard. But hey, uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, um, and I will see you tomorrow after I read your comments. Trying to determine whether we should go despotists or try to stay as socialist as possible. Thanks for watching, and have a great, 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 great Siberian rest of your day.